Thanks for tuning in to another Seek Out the Adventure video. We hope that our videos are inspiring you to live an exciting life no matter where you're at or what you're doing. Today I'd like to talk to you about biking with a large family. My wife and I, we have six children. We have a lot of bikes. When we want to take our bikes with us camping or on a long road trip to a family reunion, where do we put them? I wouldn't even be able to fit all of our bikes without any gear in the back of the van. And I've been trying to find the ideal bike rack that can hold the majority of our bikes. I've been researching a ton of different bike racks out there, and I recently came upon this bike rack made by Wolf Racks. The two things that I love about the Wolf Racks is, one, the bikes are mounted with the tires facing away from the vehicle, and they're mounted by the handlebars. What I love about this design is, by having the tires facing away from the vehicle, it's taking all of the heavy, sections of the bike and putting them as close to the vehicle as possible. This allows the bike rack to stay in one setting, a vertical setting. Now the other companies usually have the, the bike tires facing towards the vehicle and the bike is mounted either by the tire or by the fork. What I don't like about this design is that first off, by having the tires facing the vehicle, all of the heavy weight of the bikes are farther away from the vehicle. And then in order for the tires to clear the back wall of the van, you need to set the rack at a secondary position, which is angled away. So there you have not only the heavier portions of the bike farther from the vehicle, but now you've tilted them even further away from the vehicle. I don't like this because it creates a lot of stress and a lot of unnecessary forces on the hitch. So with that, I really love this design because it allows all of the heavy um, weight of this configuration to be as close to the vehicle as possible on a vertical plane that doesn't create any unnecessary forces that will bend anything. So here we have an up close look at how the bikes mount to this rack. Pretty much there's two hooks and you just saddle the handlebars down in it and then you can see that most of the weight is pretty much right there where the handlebar mount and the lower part of the handlebar kind of uh, intersect together. As for the tires, there's nothing fancy in regards to how the tires are secured onto the bike rack. And then you just secure them down with some bungees or some straps and, you know, keeps it pretty solid. One of the biggest things that I look at when I'm trying to haul such a heavy load of bikes is how much it wiggles and wobbles. This section doesn't even move, it's in there solid, but this vertical piece still has some back and forth play in it. And so a couple of things that could be done to, to eliminate that, but it's not nothing super crazy. Let's look at the side to side wobble and see what that's like. All right, now that we've looked at some of the details of what the rack looks like and how it functions with the bikes on it, we're gonna go ahead and pull the bikes off and give you a look of what the rack looks like bare naked. Here is the bare naked rack on the back of our Ford Transit. I just love the simple design of it, but fully functional. So let's get a look at these hooks. This is what your handlebars are hooked on. And this is what is stabilizing your rear wheel. All right, now that we have that done, it's time to show you what you really wanna see, and that is how easy is it to throw all of these bikes on. For your benefit, I decided to put five different bike sizes on this rack so you can see the different ways that they fit and so forth. Um, we've got a large size adult mountain bike. We've got a small framed um, adult mountain bike. We've got a regular sized youth mountain bike and we've got a youth size BMX bike and then one of those teeny tiny like 16 inch or 12 inch bikes. 
for little kids. Now when loading and unloading this rack, keep in mind, you can do it multiple ways, but the most ideal way is when loading, start from the left and work to the right. And then when you're unloading, start from the right and work to your left. Because as you see, they kind of nest in each other. And so yes, you can take it off with the left one first. It just a little awkward, but nothing much. I mean, if you needed to take a bike off in the very middle, you can. I do like that because let's say I just want to go riding with the, and the other kids and mom are staying at camp. I can quickly pull mine off without having to unload all the other ones just to access one that's either at the very left or in the middle. So I do like that. Now when loading it, the, the best technique that I found is you want to grab your hand here on the left side of the fork and right here on the lower part of the seat tube. Pull up because then you can angle this how you need. Slip it in. Can I access the inside of the vehicle through the back doors with this rack on? So here it is, like with it upright, I can open this door just this much. That's as far as I can get into it. Right, you just pull out this pin. And you have complete access to the back of the vehicle. Now the thing that takes the longest, I think, is not taking the bikes on and off, but strapping them on. Now you can use a bunch of different straps. You can use bungees, you can use cam straps. I think what's ideal are these little ski straps. I would say have 12 of these. One for top, one for bottom for all six. That's it guys, that's all the information I have on this bike rack made by Woof Racks. I'm really excited about it and I can't wait to use it on so many more family adventures. Find out more information and get your own on wolfracks.com. Otherwise, I'm out of here. Just kidding, I'm still here.